Hi, welcome to another exciting Unity tutorial with me, Romy Fauzi. And in this video, we are going to try to create a 2D Rectal system. So I'm going to continue from my 2D Rig project. And here, as you can see, I have a character fully rigged. Also, I've prepared an animation for this character, a pixel-like quality animation. So now with this animations prepared, let's start to set up the ragdoll system. Unfortunately, with 2D character, we don't have this ragdoll menu for 2D object, as you can see here. So we need to set up this by ourselves. So in order to do that, let's expand our character object and expand all of the bones here. So I'm going to hold Alt on the keyboard and then click on the pelvis here. So it will expand all of the child. And now we need to select all of the child that we are going to set as a ragdoll. We need to set the pelvis, the tummy, the chest, the upper arm, the forearm. We don't need to set the hand and also the left upper arm, the left forearm, the neck, and we don't need to set the head also. And for the leg, we need to select all of them. So with this all selected, let's add a capsule collider 2D and a rigid body 2d and we want to also add a hinge joint chudi but we want to delete the hinge joint on the pelvis so let's just do that and now we need to set the size of our capsule collider so i'm going to select a similar bone here for example the right upper arm the forearm and the left upper arm and the left forearm and we can change this all together to make things faster so let's just do that and let's just adjust the size of the x and the y here okay so let's change the direction to horizontal and then change the axis here and make the y smaller there you go so it fits with our bone here and now if we have the approximate correct size according to our bone we can offset the x or the y value depending on your direction and in this case i'm going to offset the x position and make it something like this probably make the y value even smaller and now as you can see here we need to change the size of our right forearm so let's just select the right forearm and i'm going to expand this a bit maybe to 145 1.45 and then move the x offset a bit okay so now if we select all of them you'll see that we have approximately the correct size so now let's go to the tummy and the chest here and we want to modify this also so for the chest i'm going to adjust the size here and set the x offset to something around this position we want to make sure that the capsule collider encompass the size of the bone here. So just increase the X and the Y value here. There you go. Okay, I'm going to adjust the rest of the bone and going to fast forward the video. Okay, so now we have set up all of the collider here we want to set up the hinge joint now so in order to do that first we need to make sure that we set up this correctly based on its hierarchy so for example for the tummy we want to connect the tummy to the pelvis in order to do this let's just select the tummy and then drag the pelvis to the connected rigid body and we want to make sure that we disable the auto configure connected anchor so uh, the next thing that we want to do is we want to select the chest and then drag the tummy to the connected rigid body here and also disable the connected anchor and we can select the rest here before we continue and then disable the auto configure connected anchor option and the next thing that we want to set up is we want to select both of the upper arm and then make sure it's connected to the chest so let's just drag the chest to this rigid body slots here and uh, oh, sorry first we want to auto connect the anchor and then disable it 
and the same goes with the hand uh, we want to select its parent enable and disable it and for the forearm let's just do that enable the connected anchor settings and disable it for the neck we want to connect this to the chest enable and disable it and for both of the thigh we want to connect this to the pelvis so let's just drag the pelvis and then enable disable it and for the knee we want to select to each respective parent and the same goes with the foot connect it to the knee here also the right foot connect it to the right knee here okay now we have this setup the next thing that we need to do is we need to define the limit of the angle limits here so uh, if we select all of the bones that has a hinge joint to the component attached to it let's just select all of them here and then let's just enable the use limits here but we need to set up this separately so for the tummy example uh, we want to set the bone here we can use this but we cannot see the handle so I'm going to drag the value here by dragging the name here so we can change its value and you will be able to see the range of the where is it we should be able to see ah, there you go we should be able to see the limits here and I want to make sure that the tummy only move from this point to this range here range of the rotation of the hinge joint so let's just uh, make the gizmo icons much smaller so we can see the limits of our hinge joint and now I'm going to adjust this value here so the body can only bend to this direction and also to this direction for the minimum and the maximum angle and for the chest we want to set the same value we want to set it like this and for the arm we want to set it to something like this so make sure uh, we don't have an overlapping arch on the uh, hinge limits because if we rotate this too many times you see that we can have a overlapping arch here so I'm going to scrub this back and we need to make sure that the hinge uh, are set to the most logical way I mean uh, for example for the hand it can swing to this way and to this way here but for the forearm we should be limited to this area here to this rotation angle and to this rotation angle or straight rotation angle so if we set up the limits it should look like this something like this there you go and for the right forearm we want to set this to the same settings okay and now for the thigh the right thigh let's just set this to something like this and for the left thigh and I'm going to fast forward the rest of the part okay now we have set up all of the hinge joint we can test this out so for example if we want to test this we need to disable the animator first so we can see how the ragdoll behaves so if I press play now you see that upon starting the ragdoll will react right away there you go but we have this IK so this IK holds our hand and leg bones and for example if we disable all of the IK here you will see that it will fall uh, more correctly we don't have there you go 
So I'm going to re-enable the IK and also re-enable the animator on the parent game object. With this settings in mind, to enable the ragdoll, I've prepared a very uh, small script and I'm going to put the script in the description so you can just copy paste it. So basically it's just uh, grab all of the joints component and the rigid body components on the child object and then store the initial position and the initial rotation on start or on awake and then whenever we activate the ragdoll it record or it updates its position and rotation uh, information then we are starting to enabling the, the ragdoll so whenever we disable the ragdoll it will paste or it will set up the local position and the local rotation back to the last position and the last rotation that are saved before activating the ragdoll. And now to use this, we can just create a new C sharp script. And let's just call this a uh, ragdoll test. And we want to put both of the script to the parent game object. So let's just select the character object and then drag the ragdoll controller and also the ragdoll test. For the rectal controller, we need to set up a couple of variables in the inspector. So let's just drag the left, the right leg to the right foot IK here. And the left leg, I'm going to drag this to the left foot IK. And for the right arm, just put it on the right arm, right hand IK. And the same with the left arm. And we want to also drag the animator component to the animator slot here. Okay, now with this setup, let's just create the test. And for using the ragdoll controller, we need to have access to the ragdoll controller component. So I'm going to create a new private variable with the type of ragdoll controller. And we can just call this RGRD controller. And on start, we can grab this. So let's just type RD controller equals get component ragdoll controller and here on start we can just create an if statement to check if the mouse left button is pressed and if it's pressed we want to check the state of the ragdoll controller right now so we can check if the rd controller ragdoll active or we can check if it's not active then we want to activate so let's just type rd controller activate run the activate ragdoll method so this is all you need to activate the ragdoll using this controller and if it's active then we want to disable it so let's just so let's just run the disable ragdoll method from the ragdoll controller so let's save this and let's head back to unity now if i press play the ragdoll controller will be disabled on start and it will play the animation there you go the pixar quality animation <laughs> okay so now to test this out we can just press left click on the scene here if we press left left click you see that the ragdoll gets activated and if we press left click again it will continue playing the animation but from the animation state to the ragdoll it's more natural because it grabs the last position and start simulating from its last position and less rotation but when we are setting back from the ragdoll back to the animated state it just paste the last transform so it more abruptly you can fix this by interpolating the position from the ragdoll state back to the original state but i will leave you with your ways to modify the script okay so uh i hope you find this tutorial useful and if you like this tutorial please hit that subscribe button click on that bell button and i'll see you in the next video thanks for watching